Where's Rachel? Oh, you fucking asshole! Where is she? Where's Rachel? Stop it! Sometimes you gotta live long enough so you don't become a villain. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am bringing you a very special vlog. This is not a, a from review as such, but I'm going to go watch The Batman. It's just come out today, and um, I'm really excited about it, you know? I've seen a bunch of the trailers. It looks pretty awesome. I love Batman, so what can possibly go wrong? So I thought, you know, as I'm going along, and when I come home from watching films in the cinema, or when I watch a good film, I want to talk about it to people. And nobody wants to listen. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to make a vlog about it and I'm going to see how it goes. And if people do react quite good to it, it might be a regular thing. I'll go do like film reviews. But they're not going to be in-depth film reviews. Because there's film review websites, out, um, channels out there who are amazing at what they do. So mine is just going to be what I think of the film. And etc. etc. So don't get me wrong guys, I don't think this vlog is going to be that interesting. But it's me, chatting about films and stuff. So I don't know if you guys know, but I have a degree in filmmaking. So, um, I'm a massive movie buff. So films are a pretty big deal to me, you know. It's helped me get through a lot of hardships in life. And what the hell's that guy doing? I don't know if he knows he's on the wrong side of the road. As I'm walking to the cinema, where I used to work, um, I'm going to talk about some of my favourite films and why they're my favourite films so um, if you guys want to put in the comments right now what your favourite film is and let me know why it's your favourite film then we can talk about films like don't get me wrong like I, I don't like getting into debated arguments with people about certain things uh, especially when it comes to films because I could like something and you could dislike it and that's the way it is you know people have the right to like and dislike whatever they want. So, you must like the films I like, okay? I wanna say this review of Batman is not a spoiler. I will not do that to you guys. I'll talk about cool stuff that happened in the film, but I'm not gonna spoil anything if there's any little teasers or anything like that, okay? So the thing with being a lover of film is that I love all films. Um, well, not all films, you know what I mean, but there's a lot of films that I watch and, um, I watch it and I'm like, oh, this is one of my favourite film, you know? And it just gets added into the pile of Mike's favourite films. There's a few mentions I do want to mention, and I'll tell you why. Um, so the thing with being a lover of film is that I love all films. Um, well, not all films, you know what I mean, but there's a lot of films that I watch. And um, I watch it and I'm like, oh, this is one of my favourite film, you know? And it just gets added into the pile of Mike's favourite films. There's a few mentions I do want to mention, and I'll tell you why. Um, yeah, so I do want to talk about some of, some of the films which I love, some of the films which changed my life as well. Because there are certain films, which I'll talk about in a minute, which changed the course of my life. And um, I am forever grateful for, for a certain actor and the, these films that he was in. This is fun. I've never really spoke about films with you guys before. So I'm going to go straight in, right? Now, I have a bunch of number one films because they all mean something different for me. Um, so let's start off with the big boys, you know? The films which, which I absolutely, I love, you know, and I've always said they're my favorite films. I'll go with 300 first off, um, Braveheart and Gladiator. Now they're all kind of sword swinging, films you know um all of the main characters die at the end spoiler um but the action's really good the emotions in the film are really good you know but for me it's about courage it's about it's about standing your ground against an enemy which is bigger than anything knowing that you're gonna die at the end of the day you're gonna you're facing death but that does not stop you from defending your country defending your reputation defending who you are and that's what these films do for me you know especially 300 300 is about like 300 soldiers defending defending against an army and they just nothing could beat them 
Braveheart, same thing. It's about rebellions, fighting the English army. Gladiator, you know, he's fighting, he's fighting the whole Roman Empire in a way because he's a slave, he's a gladiator, you know? And obviously if you've watched these films, there's emotional bits in the films, which probably gets to you. You can put that logic, the same logic, the Saving Private Ryan, um, a hero facing certain death, Omaha Beach. All they could do was march forward, you know, because they know if they, if this if this attack failed, the enemy would win. But they didn't. They faced certain death. They knew what was waiting there for them. They knew there was going to be a massive beach. They knew there was going to be. I don't think Omaha Beach knew there was going to be um, German reinforcements, like a camp up there. But but still, you know, obviously, when you talk about the realism and the real, the real, what really happened towards the film it's obviously a bit different it hits you different when you think about but that's what I mean when I watch films like when I watch Saving Private Ryan for the first time and those go those doors come down and all those guys are getting killed I'm breaking my heart because that really happened you know superhero films we could talk about super superhero films all day I love all the superhero films Marvel, DC everything I love them all um, but I want to I want to talk about the other side, you know, obviously there's action films, there's comedies, everyone loves comedies. I prefer dark, dark, dark humour. Um, i trying to think of a dark humour kind of film. Things like um, Wishmaster, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's a horror, but it's really funny. I find horrors funny, um, that's why I don't like them. The only kind of horrors, I, like if you've ever watched the film Prisoners, about um, a little girl like I was missing, and... Hugh Jackman's the parent trying to find his kid. To me, that's a horror. Um, my child going missing is the worst thing that could ever happen. And the film is, that film is amazing, but it's very, it's hard to watch. Um, especially when you're a parent, it's, it's, I don't know, what, what, now I'm a parent, films just hit different. Schindler's List hits me completely different than it did 10 years ago. Another one of my ultimate favorite films is a film called Lost in Translation. Um, it's not. A, it's not. A I don't think it's a comedy. It's just one of these films I really, really enjoy watching because basically about a guy who goes to Japan to promote a, a whiskey, and he finds like, and he, and he realizes when he's there, he's actually lost his his life has lost meaning, you know, and he de he takes all these things that he lives for granted, and he meets a girl who's in the same situation. But she's, she wants what he got. She wants the attention. She wants the kind of life that he got. And it's how they kind of like, they help each other along the way, you know? And I love that. I love, I love films with like journeys. Obviously, Lord of the Rings are, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna shut up because I could talk about forever. But I do want to mention, um, I want to talk about when I was about 22. When I was about 22 years old, right? I fell into this, I want, to say, I want to say depression. It was like a really bad depression. I, I got into this place in my life where everything was everything was like worthless. I had nothing. I literally had nothing. I had no job. I was on a doll. All I was doing was playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> and it got to this point where I was like, I am so alone. I'm so depressed. I was depressed. You know. Obviously, I don't. I didn't like to admit it. You know. Um, this place of depression is, is not a nice place and obviously nowadays it's much more recognizable back then you know we're talking about t 10 years ago I was uh, I was in a bad place I was 22 21 22 and I was in a bad place so I kind of like thought I need I need some inspiration uh, I need something to to help me um, I went to the job center and the woman was like oh you are and, I, and she goes what do you want to do like you know and I was like do you know what honestly I love film. I love films. And I want to do something with film, you know? Maybe write films, maybe somehow write something which is, which is going to inspire someone to f get out of how I feel, you know? And she basically turned around to me and said, no, here's a job at McDonald's. And I was like, I listen, you're not listening. I don't want to work at McDonald's. I want to I wanna go to, I want to write film. I'm gonna, I want to make, make films. How do I do that? You, do, you can't, you need to go college. You need to go university. Basically, she was shit at a job, and what I did then, I went home that day and I read all these things that inspire me. Obviously, Blink One Eight Two and 
you know, because, you know, at the time, you could take off your pants and jacket um, was a big thing of my life. You know, it was a comedy album trying to, like, not take life so seriously. Then I remembered, like, a film. I remember a film growing up. Always used to make me happy. And it's a film I watch now and I love. Um, Hook with Robin Williams. And then I was like, oh, you know, Robin Williams, he's inspirational. He has this this energy, this amazing positive energy, which which irradiates the room. So then I started watching all his films, you know, I was watching Mrs. Doubtfire, and I could go back to the Mork and Mindy days, and I was like, this guy is amazing. You know, and it kind of, it inspired me. But then, I discovered, right? Because at this point, I, I, you know, I was probably like a lot of you, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, I wasn't really into these kind of drama films. And then I was like, what are these here? Dead Poet Society, Patch Adams, and Goodwill Hunting, right? So I'm like, all right, I'll give these a go. I bought them, I went to HMV, spent my doll money, 30 quid. They were 10, 9.99 each on DVD. And I bought these films, right? So come on, I got myself some, some Pepsi and I got myself some crisps. And I was really down because when, when I'm depressed, I eat. <laughs> And I watched these three films back to back because they're all about, all these films are about life and chasing your goals because at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, it's too late. You know, you've got one life. So you need to go out there and do it. And it's kind of like a trilogy in a way. Like if you watched them, that's what it felt like. It felt like I was watching a trilogy of this guy's life. You know, he was, he was a young teacher and then he was a doctor. <laughs> And then he was a psychiatrist. And, um, yeah, seriously, changed my life. Now, I still say to this day, if you ever feel down, or if you need inspiration, watch them films. You know, Robin Williams was, he was, to me, he, he was a role model. He was so inspirational. And his smile, obviously, was hiding a lot of what was going on underneath. And unfortunately, he committed suicide, which was... It, it's heartbreaking, it is heartbreaking because he saved my life in a way. No, no, he did, he saved my life. From then, see, I went to, um, I went to college. I walked into the college and I was like, right, what do I do? How do I, how do I become a student? I was 22 and they were trying to do, tell me to go on this, this course for older people. And I was like, no, I need to start off from scratch. I have no A-levels. So I did, I did college, then I went to university and then in college, I met Amanda, and then in my third year at university, Logan was born. And that is how my life was changed, because of those three films. Now, I could talk for hours about those films, but this is a Batman review. <laughs> this is talking about Batman. Here we go. Walking out, outside the cinema. I actually used to work in. I was working here for about five years. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to film anything in the cinema. I might film my seat. Oh, my arm is killing um, but yeah, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is a little bit about me, and a little bit of why, obviously, if you want to know more, feel free, if you ask me, and I'll, I'll make a video about it, um, of what I did and how I did it, um, and what these films meant to me, because I could talk about these films, but, of, of what they meant to me, but I don't want to make, like, a somber, a somber kind of depressing vlog i want to make a vlog which is which is fun and exciting like you see on my vlogs you know let's go on an adventure you want to see you want to see fun mike you don't want to see depressing mike and i tell you now once i've been there down that low i'll never ever go there again never no matter what happens no matter what life throws at me i will never get back to that point because when you think about it the darkness you know is shit so Let's check this film out then, is it guys? So I did forget to mention that uh, the ticket cost me 15 pounds. I'm actually seeing it in a super screen. Um, I've picked a seat near the back. So um, we'll go check it out now and see what it's all about. Obviously I can't film in the cinema because it's illegal. Um, and obviously working in the cinema, I'm not gonna be that stupid of mine to do the film in the cinema. But I'll film when the films are on, just to show you the seats and stuff. Right, see you in a moment. Check out that sky. Oh, awesome that sky looks. So, ugh, got my phone on my hand. Oh, that look pretty. Can't really see it on the camera. Right. So, I just come out of the Batman. Shit. Shit, guys. 
<laughs> no, no, I disagree. It was very, very, very amazing. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. There is one little thing which bugged me. Only one little thing, it's only one tiny little thing, is when Bruce Wayne, was Bruce Wayne, when he was Bruce Wayne, um, his hair was over his eyes and I just wanted to move it out of the way. That was the, that was the only issue. I understand why they did it, you know, Bruce Wayne, his hair is covering his face. It probably means, you know, he's still masked as Bruce Wayne. Um, he's still hiding behind something, you know, even though he's he's facing the world, but he's not ready yet. And then as, obviously, as the film progresses, you see his hair, like not blocking his face no more. Like he's, he's becoming more of a Bruce Wayne character. That kind of film language, you know? Anyway, so I think a lot of people are gonna be like, what's Robert Patterson like as, as Bruce Wayne Batman? I just wanna cast you back to when Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker. Because I was one of the ones who were like, what? Why would they cast Heath Ledger as Joker? Like, I like Heath Ledger, I think he's a good actor, but not the Joker, and how wrong I was. As soon as I seen that first makeup test, and how amazing he looked, and then obviously, he, you know, the guy won an Oscar. Um, for his performance in The Dark Knight because it was just amazing and same with Patterson he, he, that, was, that was amazing the Batman is very much like the if you ever played the Arkham Asylum games um, he's a little bit like that um, in terms of the way the costume is and everything like that um, what can I say about it without spoiling it story is really really good uh, wow Batman is already established as Batman. His costume is kind of like makeshift, you know, it's not it's not where it was in the Dark Knight yet. He's kind of like, he's still, he's still learning, you know, he's still young. Um, in At the beginning, he does say like, it's his second year, like year two of him being Batman. So um, obviously we know his origin, we know what happens, we know we're, from watching all the other Batman movies. Um, and top people, like the commissioner and all these all these top top dogs are getting murdered you know and they're leaving by this guy and they're leaving uh, he's leaving like clues and riddles for batman and obviously batman is like super super intelligent you know he's dc is detective comics um the world's greatest detective and um he gets dragged into this story um but his character development through the film is very interesting how he like because we all we all know batman is a fucking psychopath we all know he's nuts there's a guy dressing up as a bat going around beating up criminals in the night we know someone like that has to be a little bit crazy bat bat crazy <laughs> but um yeah and he kind of like realizes the fucking life he kind of like realizes throughout the film that what he got to do, you know, and what he needs to do to be a better, a better vigilante, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it's very, very good. It's very clever how they do that. Um, I hope that helped. To see where he's going to go from this. And how he's going to progress into um, the Dark Knight. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be good. He's got a lot of, uh, he's got a lot of demons to fight, you know. And, um... Very good, it's very interesting. Um, the car chase scene was awesome. I just thought it was a little bit long. Um, it's because I, I'm not fussed of, of car scenes, car chase scenes, you know? Um, but the thing that does happen from the car scene is amazing, visually stunning. Cinematography is, is bang on, and obviously um, it looks really cool on the film. And like, you know, you could look at what happens it's on the trailer, basically, the, the Penguin's car gets flipped upside down, you know, and Batman comes towards him, and you could be seeing, like, there's all fire behind Batman, and he's coming out of, like, a bat out of hell. You could say the car is, like, flipping the Penguin's world upside down, you know, or Batman's world upside down. He's turning crime on his head, that kind of thing, you know. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's amazing. Very good film. I advise you all to go watch it. <laughs> I will, uh, I will definitely be buying it on UHD when it comes out. 
So the kind of vibes I was getting was, it's a little bit like Watchmen in terms of, if you ever seen Watchmen, um, where Rorschach's like, Rorschach's Journal, 1991, whatever. It was a little bit like that, you know, Batman was kind of narrating bits of the story and it started off with that. They kind of remind me of a little bit of Judge Dredd because the city has obviously turned to shit. Um, oh, it's good. It was very, very good. Very good film. I really enjoyed it, guys. So, um, I think that's it. I think that's the end of the vlog. Like, I can't really talk too much about the film without spoiling it, you know. There's, there's awesome fight scenes in there. The bat costume looks amazing. If you've ever played any of the Arkham Asylum games, you know, it's kind of that Batman. He's the Arkham Asylum Batman. Uh, Rob Patterson, class. The villains are all class. He got like a, like a, like tastes of um, Seven. If you ever seen Seven, like you know, there's a there's a serial killer going around, and um, there's this massive conspiracy, and there's this massive kind of like corruption, and Batman's in the centre of it all because you know it's Batman. <laughs> yeah, and it was really, really, really good. I really enjoyed it. So yes, so that is the end of the vlog, guys. I gotta now go into Tesco and pick up some milk, then have a nice long walk home. What's that smell? Oh, look at this. It's a restaurant you can meet up. And it's pumping out the fumes of the of the cookingness. I just stand here because it's nice light. Right, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. Um, subscribe to the channel. Like, if if you want me to do like proper like film reviews and stuff, I'm willing to do that. You just gotta let me know. Like, I'll proper like get into it, talk about like the directing, the writing, all stuff like that. It could be like a little side project I could put on Spud Boys, like Spud Boy film reviews or something. Um, it's just an idea. Um, would you watch it? You know, might you pull in people who just want to watch movie reviews? And I could talk about, you know, I could sit in front of my computer instead of me out and about, or I could go out to different places and talk about it, with clips of the film, talk, talk about like parts I loved and, you know, but they'd be spoiler heavy. Like if you've never seen certain films, um, then yeah, like, oh, I love this scene and this scene's full of emotion or whatever, whatever, whatever. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, this wasn't really planned. I thought, you know, Batman's out today. I want to come see, I'm going to try and get this vlog up either tonight or tomorrow. Um, I'll probably get it up tonight because Batman's just come out today. It's Friday right now, um, Friday the 4th. So yeah, so that is the end of the vlog, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you all later. And I love you. <laughs>